Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. Hi, Moms Making Six Figures. Today, I am interviewing my friend, Sarah Cortez. She is a mother of three and a sales professional, and she also owns a sales training company, which is a very interesting company. Um, For those of you that are in sales, I think you will really, really appreciate it. And for those of you that aren't, I think you will learn something. She's an awesome person and a really, really fun person to be around. So enjoy today's podcast. Today, I'm here with my friend, Sarah, Sarah Cortez, and we happen to be in a women's group together, high-performing women that we started, wow, it's been quite a few months ago now. Yeah, it's good. We're keeping each other accountable, you know? Yeah, it's been great. It's important. So thank you for doing this for me. Absolutely. I think it would be awesome if you would just start out with your story, how you ended up where you are today. And then we can talk a little bit about your business that you started Mm -hmm. and just all of the things. Okay. (laughs) So my story is all sales background, right? I mean, I feel like I've been in sales since I was really young because you're, you know, as a, as a kid, you're always trying to sell your parents on something, right? Well, (laughs) I was pretty good at it. So (laughs) it happens to be my career and I've been in sales for over 20 years. I started in media And Mm -hmm. I spent 11 years in media sales and sales management. And then I went into um, the chamber. And so I I did sales for the chamber, memberships, sponsorships, advertising, that stuff. And then now I am working at Alliance Title. And so I'm in the real estate industry. And my husband's also a realtor. So we are riding the wave of this market here Mm -hmm. locally. And um, it's keeping us busy. We have three kids between the two of us. And so they're all in travel sports of their own. Oh. And so we're keeping up with them. And then on the side, I'm, I'm learning to fly. And so I'm almost a pilot, which mm-hmm. will be awesome in a couple of weeks. I'll probably have that wrapped up. And my aviation interest started back when my first memory was in my dad's plane. And I was looking up at him and I was looking out the window and I was like, someday. <laughs> someday yeah, awesome. I'll be a pilot <laughs> so sales so let's talk about that obviously a lot of the women that are listening to this are aspiring to six figures mm-hmm. some are our counterparts that are at that stage and just like you know listening to people that are like themselves but someone that is thinking oh sales like I can make six figures in sales <laughs> absolutely oh, yeah it's the right <laughs> the, the right kind though yeah <laughs> so how has title been for you because it's obviously very different than being with the chamber or being in media yeah right? and so it's a lot of a it's a softer sale mm-hmm. and so um you know for those people out there that are like I don't want to be salesy um it's still sales but it's not quite as cutthroat as media I mean media is just um, dog eat dog world, right? You're out mm-hmm. there trying to um, make everything happen on a timeline, mm-hmm. and so um, and and you know, title sales is a little bit different. It's more of a relationship base. Um, I've found that in you know, basically my three different industries in sales, they've all been um, pretty unique in their own. Like when you're at the chamber, it's actually a nonprofit, and mm-hmm. you are a servant of the public, you know, and, and that was awesome. And I did that for seven years. Um, media was 11 years and it gave me the base of sales that I need. We had amazing training. I had amazing mentors and managers and, um, you know, I learned everything about sales Mm -hmm. basically, you know, when I started out in my first job, which was awesome. And I feel so fortunate because not all companies do sales training, yeah. like they used to. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I started my sales training company was mm-hmm. because when I went into the chamber world, I realized, wow, 
there's a lot that that you know chamber salespeople don't know mm-hmm. because they haven't been trained. And so I wanted to help people like that. Yeah, it's interesting. I think you and I kind of came up at the same time at the place where companies were really investing in sales mm-hmm. training. Because I know when I was in pharma, it was oh, ongoing. Yeah. I mean, oh, they yeah. invested a tremendous amount mm-hmm. in us. And mm-hmm. I actually hadn't thought about that until you just said it, that there's probably a lot of companies that don't, that won't make that investment. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what I find in, you know, my sales training company mm-hmm. is like, wow, there, what we used to have and was a huge benefit, mm-hmm. if it, you know, it might still exist, especially in pharma, mm-hmm. um, but not as much in other corporate settings. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you talked about your sales training company. Yeah. So you just have to say the name. Of oh, it. yes. Okay. <laughs> the F word makes all the difference. And so <laughs> that's the that's the name of the platform. Okay. Uh, the company, excuse me, the company is Business and Belly Laughs. And uh-huh. the reason I made, you know, it, that the overarching is because I love sales, but I also love to laugh. And uh-huh. I feel like if you can lead with humor if that's your you know personality Mm -hmm. um you can crack through any any barrier um if you can make someone laugh i just i just love the f word because (laughs) i want to say it all the time because it you it so leads you in one direction Mm -hmm. but your training is so another direction that's (laughs) that's why i told people you know when i first rolled it out i was working at the chamber and they're like "Mm, i think you might have to change the name Mm -hmm of your platform. And I was like, uh-uh. no. I was like, if I tell a salesperson that they're going to go sit in a conference room and learn about how to create their sales formula, mm-hmm. they're not going to come to my breakout right. session. Right. <laughs> so the F word, I mean, that catches everybody's what? attention. And here we are, and they'll come to my session. And then we realize that it's actually a fast moving, fast paced, fun mm-hmm. environment to learn about sales and how to figure out your formula mm-hmm. and then how to fudge through. And that's really um, that's why I built it. Mm-hmm. So talk about that because you have a um, employee, you are an employee mm-hmm. for a title company. Yeah. And you have your own independent company. Correct. And then you're a mother. Yeah. And very active in the community. Yeah. So talk about that and how you navigate that as, you know, a business professional that has a lot of balls that you're juggling. Lots of balls. Uh, I'd say that I don't have the cleanest house in town, and that's okay. (laughs) I'll clean it up before somebody comes over. But there's something that's got to give because you're right. I mean, I love having a full-time job because as I'm doing sales trainings, I'm actually out in the field, Mm -hmm. and I say fudging through with them. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm out there um, boots on the ground, and I can actually, you know, plug in stories of what's actually happening in my work um, mm-hmm. into my business training and sales training. Um, and so I love that. So I love having the job and then having the company that helps other people with their job. Mm-hmm. And then my kids, they're they're a job too. Yeah. <laughs> We've got three of them and they're all in they're travel three sports. full-time jobs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we travel with them a lot. It's just, it's great to have a company that I work for that is super flexible with the way that I run my life, live my life, because you'll find me a lot answering emails at 11.30 p.m., which isn't, you know, normal business hours, but for me it is. So Mm -hmm. it's all good. I love that you said that, the boots on the ground, because I do find oftentimes there's a lot of people that train, and I've found um, people only train well when they're still actively doing. I feel that way. It gets it gets dated very, very quickly if you're not actively engaged in whatever it is that you're training on, right? It's mm-hmm. such a powerful way to teach is by showing people. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm sure that's why you've become so successful too, because you are still in the business mm-hmm. and you're also training people how to be successful in the business as well. Mm-hmm. So that's, I think it's important. Yeah. So what's your parenting tip? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my parenting tip. Let's see. Roll with the punches. And I also, I love to laugh with my kids too, you know? So um, some things that maybe, you know, maybe some people are a little more uptight about, I'm just, I just laugh, you know, you just have to laugh. That's <laughs> and, great though. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I don't know if I'm the person to be giving parenting tips, but I like to say I'm a, I'm a pretty good mom, you know, pretty good. 
<laughs> I'm I not winning you, mom of the year. I think you have it together. I don't think anyone's <laughs> winning mom of the year, personally. But. but we have a lot of fun. And that's, I mean, we all like to do things that each person likes to do. So mm-hmm. whether that be, you know, ski together, snowboard together, that's awesome. Whether that be go to baseball games, that's awesome. And we all like to laugh. Mm-hmm. And so we don't take ourselves too seriously, which is good. <laughs> Do you remember when you hit six figures the first time? I do. That was incredible because I was a single mom and I had a daughter and it was during the downturn. So my media job was changing and they were eliminating the position that they had created for me Mm -hmm. and in the way that they created it for me. And so they were like, you know, we're not we're not eliminating your position. But what had happened was that I went into um, more of a digital um, platform Mm -hmm. for media. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, we're going to kind of scale back on that. And so I had already taken half of my list and given it to someone else. So they're like, you can still do that and you can build your list again. And I was like, wow, that's gonna, I mean, it took me a while to build that list and I know I can do it again. Mm -hmm. Wasn't really excited about doing that as a brand new mom. Mm -hmm. So my daughter was, I think eight or nine months old and I had out of the blue, a headhunter reached out to me and, you know, they were asking me if I would look at this position. Mm-hmm. And it, sh- it turned out to be my dream job. But in the beginning, like they called and they left a message and they're like, we want you to look at this job in Twin Falls. And I was like, I didn't even call them back. And I was like, <laughs> now, and uh, then they called me back and they're like, hey, like we called you a couple weeks ago and we want you to look at this job. And I said, I know you called me and you said Twin Falls. And I, that's why I didn't call you back. And they're like, well, we really think this would be a good fit. And sure enough, it was my dream job. And I was able to, you know, set a number mm-hmm. that I needed in order to do that move. And that just happened to be like during the downturn, at the very beginning of the downturn. And so I was taken care of. And that I'm so thankful. Mm-hmm. And after that, I promised never to not call someone back if they called me to mm-hmm. look at a job, which is why I'm at Alliance Title. You know, mm-hmm. I'm there because somebody called me and I said, yep, I'll go to coffee <laughs> because I I really feel like it was divine mm-hmm. um, in that moment where the Lord knew exactly what I you needed did. to be doing. Mm-hmm. And um, and so he gave me this platform that would be, you know, this job that was actually my dream job that I would be able to take care of my daughter on my own. And I just had to move to Twin Falls for a few years. And it turned out that I met some of the most amazing people. And it was a really good move for me and my daughter. And then we moved back three years later, which was great. Mm -hmm. So that was the first time that I broke that. And I did it in the downturn, which is so interesting. Yeah. (laughs) So I was very blessed. Yeah. Yeah, It was, I was so fortunate that that happened because that doesn't always happen. (laughs) I think it's also just interesting in what you said in that you always take calls. Cause I say that to people a lot. I'm like, you know what? I'll always go to coffee with someone. I try to not make an immediate judgment Mm -hmm. because you just never know. And it may not be that, but it may be the relationship that you create mm-hmm. in that or, yeah. It's yeah, so, absolutely. I yeah. learned my lesson yeah. on that one. That's powerful, though. Mm-hmm. So what am I not asking you that you think could be a really good lesson for people that you've learned? You know, I, I love talking about laughing. Um, and especially right now with the times that we're in, it's like, Laughter is such a medicine. And mm-hmm. even, you know, I mean, it's even in the Bible, laughter is a medicine. And so, I mean, I really like to talk about laughter as a way to just make everything feel better. <laughs> I don't know what else. Mm-hmm. Um, no, you know, sales is kind of my big thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, flying is also a huge part of you, a huge part of my mm-hmm. life, my background and everything like that. So, um You know, aviation, my next job will be in aviation for a company that I can also um, be a salesperson for. So we'll see what that is or when that happens. But I'm I'm open. Mm -hmm. (laughs) How about for you? I mean, when you're coaching people through, what are some of the things you're telling them? Yeah, so many of the things that you brought up, Mm -hmm. I think 
especially for women, it's, I watch so many women put ceilings on what they think they can accomplish instead of, and I think a lot of times those of us as women that have had the success that we've had, it's allowing them to see that they can do it because we know they can, Mm -hmm. but they have to know that they can, right? That is a great point. I remember the moment that I started believing in myself on some of my dreams Mm aviation-wise, and it was a conversation that I was having with my dad. We were, my dad lives on an island in Washington, and my best friend lives over there from, my best friend from college, Mm -hmm. and so she had come over to just visit, and she asked me what everybody asks me all the time, what are you going to do with your pilot's license once you have it? Mm -hmm. And I was telling her my dream, you know, but I was also telling it as a pipe dream. And I was like, oh, my pipe dream. And then my dad's over there and he goes, ha, when horses fly. And I was like, what? Like, I I was so hurt by that. But then I took that and I used it as fuel. And that was actually the moment that I started believing in that dream. Mm -hmm. And also the moment that I stopped calling it a pipe dream. Mm -hmm. And so you're right. Don't put ceilings on yourself. Don't call your dreams a pipe dream. Mm -hmm. Because if you can dream it, you can see it. And then you get that key factor of believing it. Mm-hmm. That's when it'll happen. Yeah. And so, um, I and it love doesn't that always happen that. the way that you expect no. it to. <laughs> but no, <Nope>. happen yes. <laughs> there just might be a few twists and turns along the oh, way, right? For sure. <laughs> yeah, like nothing n- happens exactly the way that you dream right? it to happen. Exactly. <laughs> but then when you like take a step back and you're like, oh, I did put that out there. Mm -hmm. And it did happen in a different way. You know, (laughs) this led to this led to that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And then just keeping on the path of if it's really your dream, keeping on that path Mm -hmm. of, you know, focus and daily discipline. And, you know, and that's really part of what I teach when I'm teaching, you know, your formula, your sales formula is only half of the battle. Yeah. And then we say, find your formula and fudge through. Mm-hmm. And the fudging is you have your formula now. You need the urgency and the discipline yeah, to get the growth and excellence that you want. And so we're all fudging through. And part of that is urgency and discipline. Yeah, discipline is such mm-hmm. a big one. Yeah. Such a big one. Doing things when you don't want to do them absolutely is like half the battle, I think. Yeah, I don't yeah. think anyone can sit here in you know a conversation about success mm-hmm. and not have a plan for discipline. Mm-hmm. And doing the things that you don't want to do when you don't want to do them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so true. Mm-hmm. Okay, so book or podcast. Probably both for you, but which one would you recommend? Is there a book that you recommend to people? So my favorite book is a sales book, of course. Um, It's by Jeb Blunt, and it's called Fanatical Prospecting. Um, And so, and then you say podcast. I love podcasts. I also love Clubhouse. Oh, yeah. Uh, And so I've been, you know, it's kind of live podcasting, Mm -hmm, basically, mm -hmm. where you can actually have some feedback and and you know get into the conversation yeah um so I love I love books I like to listen to books because if I you give me a book and I you sit me down I'm asleep yep. <laughs> so I listen to books I listen to podcasts I watch videos mm-hmm. and um and I'm on clubhouse a lot cool how about you yeah. what do you like yeah, I love books. Okay. I love books. But Paper. I do, but I do, I do just because I like to take notes mm-hmm. and highlight and circle and mm-hmm. um but podcasts, I listen to all the time yeah. as well. I mean, you and I both have that. We're in the car a lot. So, <laughs> yep. mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, that's good. thank you so much for doing this with me. Oh, for sure. I so appreciate your time. Oh, absolutely. This has been great. Yeah. 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 I love what you're doing here. This is a great studio, too. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to MomsMakingSixFigures.com. That's right, MomsMakingSixFigures.com.